welcome students so we are going to start with the next chapter that is absorption by roots and the processes involved so in this chapter this is also absorption is also one of the plant physiology and plant what is plant physiology it is the branch of the biology which deals with the life functions of the plant and it includes the functioning of cells tissues organ organ system and organism as a whole so we are going to study with the processes like osmosis which has very important significance in the life of a plant now this diagram if you see this is a ts of root so if this you see this these are the sand particles in the water and how the movement of water takes place here from the root here this is epidermal layer into the cortical cells okay and this is endodermis and entering into the vascular bundle this is the file a xylem so from here it moves up towards the stem so what is absorption that is absorbing of water by the roots of the plant so the roots not only fix the plant in the soil giving it support but very important function is that they absorb water and the mineral nutrients which are present in the soil and then they move them up to the leaves flowers and fruits now besides being a constituent of protoplasm water is needed by the plant for photosynthesis transpiration transportation and mechanical stiffness now in photosynthesis you know that water is the main uh, raw material to the synthesis of glucose then transpiration a large amount of water is lost in the atmosphere through the process of transpiration and very good effect is that it gives cooling effect to the plant in the hot weather then transportation the transportation of substances in water solution from the roots upward into the shoot or from the leaves to other part upward will be mineral salts from the roots from leaves the food that is prepared sugar is transferred mechanical stiffness water provides turgidity that is firmness fully distended which is necessary for the stiffness of the plant cell and the mineral nutrients required by the plant are absorbed from the soil by the roots onwards and what are these nutrients these are nitrate phosphate sulfates you can underline this and also some elements like potassium calcium magnesium and chloride and why are they required for uh, they are required as the constituent of the cell or cell in the cell organelles as well as synthesis of a variety of compounds and enzymes so we move next what are the features or the characteristics of roots for absorbing water so there are three characteristic and this is very important huge surface area okay provided by the rootlets and the root hair and then root hair contains cell sap at a higher concentration that means water content is less and solute inside is more than the surrounding soil water and they have thin walls so these are the three points which are very important for you to learn now see here this is one small seedling and you can see so many roots if we take them out and if we take them out and we stretch them it's going to be so many kilometers long so this is the surface area so this is that it provides surface area of the root is very enormous and then uh, root here contains cell sap of a higher concentration now you know that root hairs are the extension of now this is very important if they ask you what are root hairs they are the extension of the outer epidermal cells of the root they also contain large vacuoles and that is why they are stiff they are turgid so that solution inside the vacuole is known as cell sap now there are so many salts which are dissolved in the cell sap therefore they have higher concentration of solute as compared to the surrounding water and this is the characteristic important requirement only then the water will be taken up by the root the concentration inside the cell sap has to be at a higher concentration end 
so that the water from the outside moves inside the root hair. Now if we talk about this side, we have that root hairs have thin walls. Okay, So like all plant cell, root hair has also two layers, one outer cell wall and a cell membrane. The cell wall is thin and it is freely permeable. So it allows the movement of water molecules and the dissolved substances freely in and out. On the other hand, the cell membrane is very thin and semi-permeable. It allows only water molecules to pass through and no other larger molecules of the dissolved sort. So see here, this diagram is very important for you to learn. Now they have shown here one root hair and this root hair is, see, this is epidermal layer. Now this root hair is coming as an outgrowth of one epidermal cell. So that is why we say root hair is the epidermal outgrowth. So if you see the diagram, the outer wall we have is the cell wall. Inner to it will be cell membrane and this is a large distended vacuum. Okay, So all this dotted part is cytoplasm, they are towards the periphery and this is the nucleus. Same way you can see the outgrowth of root hairs here beginning to grow. So this diagram can come for drawing as well as uh, labeling. So question based questions can also be come on this type. And then progress stretch try to do it on your own. Then absorption and conduction of water and minerals. Now the first there are different ways in which uh, there is movement of water and the, it is conducted upward, upward through the stem. There are five phenomena here. Imbibition, diffusion, osmosis, active transport, turgidity or placidity that is also known as plasmolysis. Now imbibition, learn the definition. It is the phenomenon by which the living or dead plant cells absorb water by surface attraction. Like in the rainy days, you have seen that your wooden doors, they swell up because that's the dead part of the plant and it absorbs water. It is attracted towards water. So it is hydrophilic, has strong affinity attraction for water. So they imbibe, absorb water and swell up. So dry seeds, if you soak seeds in the water in the morning, they will swell up. Wooden doors swell up on contact with water. So this is all because of the imbibational pressure. Seed coat ruptures in case of germinating seed. And it is also important force in the ascent of sap. Then diffusion already you have done in your lower classes. It is the free movement of molecules of a substance. It is a solute. It can be sol or solvent, gas, liquid, from the region of higher concentration to the region of their lower concentration when both, this is important, both are in direct contact. Now they have taken here, let's take a sugar cube or uh, a crystal of potassium permanganate in a beaker of water. And after some times you will see, if we take potassium permanganate, after some times you will see that the whole beaker has colored water. Now they have shown here the picture, so let's see here. You put a crystal of potassium permanganate, slowly, slowly the molecules of potassium permanganate starts moving from one corner, higher concentration, to the other part where there is no potassium permanganate. And after some time you will see that the whole beaker is with pink water. Right, so this is the diffusion taking place, and then uh, the definition of the molecules of the dye are more crowded. This is the explanation you can read it, and then very important osmosis and osmotic pressure. Now, osmosis is the movement of water molecules from the region of higher concentration. If they, we are talking about water molecules in a large quantity that means it is a dilute solution because the solvent concentration is less and if we are talking about lower concentration that means solute particles are more so this is the movement of water molecules from the region of higher concentration of their higher concentration right to the region of lower concentration through now this part is very important 